Right now this morning, raising hope, a Minnesota mother's mission for stillbirth tragedy spurs federal action. The story later in the newscast. And from 2018 to 2023, there were 70,000 instances of real estate cyber crimes. More on that. Plus, we're looking at pleasant weather today, holding on to warmer conditions as we go into tomorrow, and that will carry right through the work week and into your weekend. More about that coming up in just a bit. Streaming live now on News8000.com. You're watching WKBT Lacrosse. This is News 8 Now, this morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us for News 8 Now this morning. I'm Alexandra Carter. And I'm Art Jarrett. It is Tuesday, September 24th. What can we expect out there? What season can we expect today, Art? I don't know. It's a little bit of this. It's a toss-up as we go into the next few days, my friend. You're holding on to at least uh, some uh, pleasant weather, almost fall-like, then getting into summertime weather back again. It's a endless summer. Yeah, I love California. All right, as we go into it here. As we go into it, we're going to be... Okay, as we head into it, you've got a short wave that's coming in. It's going to drop a little bit of a 10% chance of rain on us as we go through the morning hours. And we'll see some also rainfall coming up from the south as the system kind of ducks around uh, the southern portions of Wisconsin and comes back again up by Madison and Chicago. We're holding on to uh, temperatures that will be pretty nice today, as I've mentioned before, and that rain chance. We're going to see that again on Friday. Here's a look at the, the rain right now. There it is kind of coming back from Minneapolis and extending downward. It's already making its track southward. It's going to come underneath this and then bring some rainfall back over to the eastern portions well over by Lake Michigan. That being said, we've got a slot over us right now holding on to some clear skies with some clouds that are already beginning to increase for Eau Claire. Hey, we're also going to see this short wave continue to work its way in. And by the time we go through the day, this is what we've got for Eau Claire, adding the cloud cover going from mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. Temperatures in the upper 40s to around the upper 50s, then around 65 degrees for the noon hour. Holding on to it's the same 52 degrees for La Crosse. Plenty of sunshine with mostly sunny skies getting into noon we're looking at 67 degrees under partly cloudy skies back to you thank you art happening today high stakes and high security in new york city this morning as president joe biden is preparing to speak before the united nations general assembly today this speech likely to be his last major address on the global stage jared hill is at the u.n headquarters in new york with the latest this morning, heightened security in New York after President Joe Biden landed in the city Monday ahead of his final address before the UN General Assembly as Commander in Chief. The speech comes as Israel dropped a barrage of missiles on southern Lebanon Monday. Nearly 500 killed, including dozens of women and children, according to Lebanese officials. But Israel says each target was a location used for storing Hezbollah weapons. It placed rockets in your living rooms? and missiles in your garage. Those rockets and missiles are aimed directly at our cities, directly at our citizens. The State Department also urging Americans in Lebanon to leave while commercial flights are still available. My team is in constant contact with their counterparts and we're working to de-escalate. In his address, President Biden is expected to highlight the U.S.'s role in defending Ukraine, managing competition with China, and ongoing efforts to strike a ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas. But experts say the real work will happen out of the spotlight. The meetings on the margins of the General Assembly bet between world leaders that we don't actually get to listen to or take part in is likely where we'll see the more substantive discussion. But little hope much here will move the needle. President Biden has a number of those bilateral meetings scheduled, but nothing with Israel Prime Minister as of now. Netanyahu's trip has been delayed because of the clashes with Hezbollah in Lebanon. Lebanon's Prime Minister canceled his trip to the UN, citing concerns about war breaking out. And the final suspect accused in a 2022 Eau Claire murder has taken a plea deal. 29-year-old Hamon Sullivan of Altoona pleaded no contest to an amended count of second degree recklessly endangering safety. Prosecutors dismissed two more serious charges against him. Sullivan and three others were allegedly involved in the death of 39-year-old Christopher Connor. The other three suspects have already reached plea agreements. Sullivan's sentencing is December 20th.
A teen is in custody after allegedly stealing multiple vehicles and a firearm over the weekend. Lake Halley police say an officer tried to stop a suspicious vehicle. The driver sped up, hit a parked car, and both vehicles ended up in a ditch. Officers found a loaded handgun when removing the 16-year-old driver. Both the gun and vehicle were confirmed stolen. He's now being held in juvenile detention until his court appearance on multiple charges. The UW Board of Regents will vote Friday whether to fire former UWL Chancellor Joe Gao from his tenure as chancellor last year after he appeared in online pornography. Now the full UW board will meet in Kenosha Friday, voting to potentially remove him from his tenured faculty position. That news comes after UW committee recommended firing Gao during a hearing in Madison last Friday. Wisconsin Democrats are criticizing Republican Senate candidate Eric Hovde over his bank's alleged ties to a troubled Mexican bank. Last week, the Milwaukee reported Banco Azteca, long ties to the Mexican drug cartel, allegedly flew $26 million in cash over the border to Hovde's SunWest Bank last December. This raises questions about why Eric Hovde still isn't being fully honest about which other foreign banks and governments are depositing money into Eric Hovde's bank. What else is Eric Hovde hiding? Democrats say they are not accusing Hovde or his bank of illegal activity, but Wickler says if Hovde doesn't reveal the foreign entities his bank has done business with, he thinks it'll be difficult for Wisconsinites to trust him. Hovde's campaign speaking out against those allegations, his spokesman releasing a statement calling them made up and a desperate ploy to distract voters. Former President Donald Trump is set to visit Crawford County this weekend. He is expected to deliver remarks at the Prairie du Chien Arts Center at 11.30 Saturday. Doors for that will open at 8.30 a.m. His campaign says he'll speak about the border and recent crimes allegedly committed by immigrants in the area. And Governor Tony Evers was in La Crosse yesterday, highlighting clean energy and sustainability. The governor's visit coincided with National Clean Energy Week. He toured Summit Environmental School on French Island, visiting classrooms, their outdoor natural playscape, and there he is. He even went canoeing with students. I think students leave here with an idea that saving our environment and being uh, conscious of how important our environment is, is, is absolutely going to be part of their lives here forever. Summit is among the next schools aiming to go solar, part of the Solar on Lacrosse Schools initiative. As the world marks Climate Week, some cities are exploring ways to transform into what are called 15-minute cities. The concept promises to reduce car trips and emissions by putting homes, workplaces, and other essential locations all just a short walk away. Bradley Blackburn has more on the idea and why some say it's oversold. This, is, this has so many of the different 15-minute city ideas. That's right. In the heart of New York City, the West Village is almost like a small town where residents stroll to restaurants, shops, and entertainment without leaving the neighborhood. Everything is accessible. NYU urban planning professor Solly Angel says it's why so many people want to live here and pay a lot for the privilege. It's not a 15 city in the sense that the people who work here cannot afford to live here. It's too expensive for the people that are working in those shops. Absolutely. But the 15-minute city movement aims to bring walkable communities to more people in far more places. The idea was popularized in Paris a few years ago. In the U.S., cities like Portland, Oregon, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and Cleveland, Ohio are exploring the concept. We have been a, a nation that has prioritized automobiles. Cleveland's mayor, Justin Bibb, told us the city recently changed some zoning rules to become more pedestrian friendly. Everybody wants clean air uh, to breathe, safe water to drink, and a good job you can get to and not be stuck in traffic for hours. But the concept has prompted conspiracy theories online, falsely claiming it's a form of permanent lockdown and there are real concerns about how it might fuel segregation. With schools, we already begin to have an issue. Professor Angel thinks the 15-minute goal ultimately won't work, especially for workplaces. The whole productivity of the city comes from individuals being able to have access to a lot of jobs and firms to have access to a lot of workers. Still, a global conversation has started as cities adapt for a changing climate. 
According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, implementing 15-minute cities could help reduce urban energy use by 25% in the next quarter century. Time now is 6:10. Still to come, Boeing issuing a new offer to the union members on strike. A new report looks into how much money is needed for bills, and Kmart is closing its last full-scale store. From 2018 to 2023, there were nearly 70,000 reported instances of real estate and rental cyber crimes. Coming up, more on what to know about those scams so you don't get caught. And for now, sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. A rare painting from Belgian surrealist artist René Marguerite's famous Empire of Light series. Could sell for over $95 million at Christie's New York this fall. That'll possibly break records. The painting is part of a private collection which will go up for auction in November. Christie's spokesperson says a significant portion of the proceeds will go to philanthropic initiatives. And now we're leaving you with a live look at New York City. This is where just in a few hours, leaders from around the world will get together to conduct the 79th United Nations General Assembly. That is where President Biden is expected to give his final address before the assembly as commander in chief. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We know Wisconsin workers can get the job done. But China has been taking our jobs. For years, our government built America's infrastructure with Chinese iron and steel. I said that's got to change. Tammy Baldwin wrote the law to make sure American projects are made with American iron and steel. Now we're getting more work in Wisconsin. With Wisconsin workers. Tammy Baldwin stood up to China and our government. She got the job done. I'm Tammy Baldwin. I approve this message. The liberal elite in Washington are running one of their own here in Wisconsin. A political insider who worked to elect liberals in California even supported a dark money group focused on defunding the police. Her name, Rebecca Cook, political operative bankrolled by the liberal elite. They handpicked her to help win back the House, trusted to elect liberal heroes like Mandela Barnes. They trust her because Rebecca Cook is one of them. I'm Derek Van Orden, and I approve this message. Your home, a place of comfort and safety, could be trying to tell you something. Interior cracks, sloping floors, hard to open doors and windows are all signals of foundation failure that you can't ignore. At American Waterworks, we use modern techniques and warranted solutions to restore your peace of mind in your home. After all, your home's foundation issues won't get better with time, but it will with our proven solutions. Choose confidence, choose reliability, choose American Waterworks. I have had the privilege of working with an exceptional team to install over 12,000 home improvements for local homeowners in the last 35 years. Now it's time for me to spend a little more time with my bride of over 50 years. Fortunately, I found an experienced remodeling contractor and corporate project manager to lead the board store into the future. And with an outstanding team by my side, I am proud to lead this amazing company my dad has built. And we look forward to continuing to serve you with the great value that is the board store trademark. Tammy Baldwin on transparency. I don't think there should be two sets of rules, one for the wealthy and one for the rest of us. Twelve years later, Baldwin pushed for conflict of interest regulations, but exempted herself. And Baldwin won't disclose any shared assets she has with her partner, despite the potential for conflict of interest. Tell Tammy Baldwin, we deserve the truth. Wisconsin Principles is responsible for the content of this advertising. It seems like everyone in Washington is either too far left or too far right. I'm Rebecca Cook, and like most folks in Wisconsin, I'm somewhere in the middle. I'll stand up to Democrats to fight for a secure border and stop wasteful spending. I'll stand up to extremists like Derek Van Orden, who wants to ban all abortions with no exceptions. Like you, I'm fed up and ready for change. I approve this message because it's time that we sent one of us to Congress.
morning to you. Let's take a look at this as we get into City Camp 8 here. We have fog and low cloud activity holding on to the area right now. There's a big layer of fog out there too. Uh, we're also seeing that, that there was like a moment that looked like there was some rainfall trying to get down to the ground, but it looks pretty uh, weak currently. But uh, you can see still holding on to this fog right here with a little light coming out of it as well. So we'll take a look at that. All right, going to the current temperatures, upper 40s to around the upper upper uh, 40s to the 50s, low 50s right now, holding on to near mild middle 50s. Uh, in fact, once we get into at least the 24 hour temperature change you're seeing now, we're at least uh, up to 13 degrees uh, warmer over in Vogue Field, much warmer to the eastern portion of our area. And then once you get to La Crosse, we're now about five degrees warmer than we were 24 hours ago. That being said, we have that look here at the current visibility and picking up some patchy fog to Winona holding on to dense fog right now. That means now we're in it, as you can see, because of Vogue Field as well as Sparta. And all that is uh, collapsing on uh, uh, La Crosse. And we knew that the fog was going to start moving to the east a little bit or from the east to the west. So bear that in mind. Down to the south, we're holding on to patchy to near dense fog right now. This fog will continue as we go into the 10 o'clock hour and start to recede over by Black River Falls by the time we finish out the 10 o'clock hour, getting to the 11 o'clock hour. 47 degrees for Eau Claire for kids starting out for the school bus this morning. Coming home, they're looking at about 70 degrees with mostly sunny skies. Then we go to La Crosse. You're looking at 50 degrees for your uh, this morning for kids going to the school bus by the afternoon 3 o'clock 73 degrees for you all under mostly sunny skies. Here's a look at that rainfall as I mentioned before still trying to work its way into our forecast. When I come back I'll give you a better view of that in just a moment. In your consumer news this morning, Boeing issuing a new offer to 33,000 machinist union members who've been on strike for 11 days now. The revised offer includes an immediate 12% raise and a 30% raise over the four year life of the contract. Before the strike began, union members rejected an offer of an immediate 11% raise and 25% over the life of the contract. Another sticking point is retirement benefits. Boeing is offering to increase 401k contribution rates, but union members want the company to bring back its pension. Almost 6 in 10 Americans say they would need to earn at least $100,000 a year to stop feeling anxious about their bills. That's according to a new report from Edelman Financial Engines. About half of that group put the amount even higher at $200,000 a year or more. Next month, Kmart is said to be closing its last full-scale store in the mainland U.S. It'll shutter its location at Bridgehampton Commons Mall on New York's Long Island. Only a small Kmart store in Miami will remain, as well as a few Kmart stores in Guam and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Real estate and rental cyber crimes are happening nationwide. According to the FBI, there are nearly 70,000 reported instances of real estate and rental cyber crimes, with over $1.4 billion lost from 2018 to 2023. Ashur Karashi takes a look at how these scams work. One way scammers are targeting people is by posing as government programs for low-income housing on social media. For example, this is a PSA about a fraudulent Section 8 housing ad from a scammer using Facebook. People fill out an application, thinking they're getting on a wait list or applying to low-income housing. Instead, scammers steal their information to commit fraud, according to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Another one is fraudulent housing listings. They often promote a low price, use fake, copied, or doctored photos, and request upfront payments. Seller impersonation fraud is an example of this. These are emails where the scammer attempted to impersonate the legitimate owner of a vacant property and steal funds from the sale. To make sure you don't become the victim of a scam, make sure to do your research. If a price seems super low, compare it to other homes in the area and verify. Ask for official documentation. Cross-check information by making sure the contact information lines up with the property owner listed on an official website. And be wary of anyone trying to make a hard sell or pushing for upfront costs before a housing agreement is signed. Bottom line, if something seems off, take a pause and do your due diligence. And if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. That's it for your morning consumer news. Time now is 619. Let's check in with Art for a look at our forecast. All right, my friend, here you go. I'm going to give you the current temperatures again because, well, we want to see how this all plays out. Going into it, what you're looking at right now, holding on to, again, widespread 40s and some 50s in there, and that'll get out of the way. You just saw some fog locally. I told you that was going to be kind of making us move back and within the hour, and so it has here locally in La Crosse. We're getting 48 degrees right now for the dew points, and we could uh, try to get some moisture out of this coming out of the, uh, the west, working its way toward this low 
a little, uh, slowly, I should say. In fact, you're going to be seeing the fog low cloud as I just showed you down to Basketball and Prairie du Chien. We have patchy to near dense fog currently, and that's also picking up here locally as you get into La Crosse. Now, some of that cloud cover for La Crosse is not necessarily near the ground, but it is still quite, uh, well, it's quite prevalent here locally. You're going to see we'll get rid of this fog as we go into the 10 o'clock hour, finishing out. All of it's coming out from the east and working westward into La Crosse. Our visibility is about 10, 10 miles, uh, about probably to 10 to 12 miles to finish out the day. That being said, Eau Claire holding on to the sunshine eventually as the 7 o'clock hour rolls around. And then by the 11 o'clock hour, you're going to still be in the sunshine with temperatures up to 63 degrees. So you're going to warm it up nicely. Uh, La Crosse at 51 degrees and then warming it up to 64 degrees by the 11 o'clock hour in and out of the sunshine with a uh, cloud cover holding on to at least mostly sunny to near partly cloudy skies. Here's what's happening. There's the rainfall over in Mason City now. Still quite a ways away, but it dissipates and starts to track down to the south. As that does, it's going to scoot on for this farther south of Prairie du Chien and start making its way over towards uh, Madison in Chicago. That happens. We're going to see some of this uh, wind start to kick up from the southwest, working its way across the area. So you're going to see that slant of the cloud cover coming in, pushing some of that cloud cover over to the east as well, and then up and out. It will go with clearing skies back from uh, the Mississippi River all the way to the east, and will clear out your skies going into the, uh, the midnight hour. That being said, we're not expecting a lot of rainfall out of that, as you can see. Even the tenth of an inch that was supposed to happen up to the north is no longer in, in the picture. Upper 60s to around the uh, low 70s today. We'll get into your zone forecast to give you an other view who's getting what today. We'll pick up from La Crosse. We're looking at at least uh, 73 degrees. Plenty of sunshine and mostly sunny skies for you. Then we'll take it up to areas right up to the south zone, holding on down to Prairie du Chien at 73 degrees. You've got at least some partly cloudy skies holding on and extend it all the way up to Westby where you're looking at mostly sunny skies there at 69 degrees. Up to the central zone for everybody. Widespread low 70s for you till you get down to Cashton where you're looking at upper 60s. Back up to the north zone, you'll hold on to temperatures just around, say, 72 for uh, areas by Chippewa Falls going to Eau Claire, doing the same, and Lady Smith around 69 degrees. Your eight day forecast for you, though. So we're going to be pleasantly cool today, then warm it up as we get into the upper 70s. That carries over through midweek going into the weekend, where you see temperatures up to 78 degrees there with rainfall chances next by 20% going into Friday and then continuing into your weekend. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you, Art. The time now is 622. Still ahead on your morning news. The hidden toll of stillbirth, one mother's law, sparking national change. How her story is reshaping federal policy on a tragedy affecting one in 160 pregnancies. Coming up in the Blitz, golfers compete at the MVC conference meet, aiming for a low score. Plus, it's a different kind of triple option on the north side. Hear how three brothers are soaking in every second of time on the field together. The world's largest festival returns the last full weekend in September. The Warren's Cranberry Festival continues to gather foodies and thrill seekers alike with a one-of-a-kind spectacle that can only be found in the last full weekend in September. Visit CramFest.com for more information. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. These places employ us, sponsor the Little League team, and feed and clothe us. That's why I'm proud of the work I've done to support our business community. I know that the side of the aisle you're on matters less than being on the side of our main streets. No party has a monopoly on good ideas. I'm Steve Doyle, and I'm working for our businesses, working for our communities, and I'm working for you. At Taco John's, we believe a better Taco Tuesday starts with better tacos. That means using 100% North American beef, cooking shelves in-house daily, and a deal that makes you say, how are these only $1.29? Taco Tuesday is every Tuesday at Taco John's. Their Bidenomics led to the highest inflation in 40 years. Highest gas prices ever. Skyrocketing interest rates. Unaffordable housing. Incomes down. Unemployment rising, and a recession now headed our way. Yet Kamala Harris is clueless. We are very proud of Bidenomics. Bidenomics is working. <laughs> I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Quartz takes a different approach to health insurance. We know every life well lived is a journey, and we're here to light the way at every step. That's why for 40 years, we've been alongside the doctors and hospitals who know what their communities need. Because they're a part of them. Because we're a part of them. There's a fire burning in all of us. Let's ignite it together. Quartz, find your spark. 
As the mom of a daughter, I'm livid that boys are now being allowed to compete in girls' sports. It's just wrong, and I blame Tammy Baldwin. She voted to let biological men into women's sports. Worse, Baldwin co-sponsored legislation to force girls to share locker rooms with biological men. Tammy Baldwin is failing to keep our families safe. Tammy Baldwin's extreme values are wrong for Wisconsin. Fix Washington Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. The world's largest festival returns the last full weekend in September. The Warren's Cranberry Festival continues to gather foodies and thrill seekers alike with a one-of-a-kind spectacle that can only be found in the last full weekend in September. Visit crampfest.com for more information. Welcome to the Blitz. Well, the culmination of the MVC girls golf season was yesterday as the ladies teed off nice and early at Viroqua Hills Golf Club. Beautiful course and a beautiful morning to go low. We'll begin with the winner of the event, Thomas Karma Hasselberger. The junior has been atop the leaderboards all season long. And yesterday was no different. She shoots an 84 in the round and will presumably be named MVC Conference Player of the Year when coaches vote on October 23rd. Finishing in the runner-up spot, another 11th grader, Emma Dobbins of Aquinas, the blue gold shooting an 85, falling just short of sending it to a playoff. In third place is senior Jayana Palm of Coleman. She finishes one back of Dobbins with an 86 on the day. And for the team scores, it was the day of the Timberwolves. They get four golfers to finish in the top seven, and they take first place, an impressive showing. Coming in second was the Aquinas Blue Golds, who shot a 388. Molly Swift finished tied for ninth for Aquinas. And in third place, two strokes behind the Blue Golds, the Onalaska Hilltoppers, who shot a 390. Sydney Cranig and Olivia Conrardi Bucall both finished in the top 10. When opposing coaches get ready to game plan for the Logan Ranger football team, they can't just say watch out for check. They need to be a bit more specific. I sat down with the three brothers and talked about what it's like playing at the varsity level together. Go! They say when going through a football season, your teammates turn into your brothers. Hey, good catch, Tommy! Well, for Bradley, Owen, and Tommy Check, they've been tackling life together for a while now. Plenty of like friends, family friends within the neighborhood where we would, you know, play with them, invite them over, whether it was to our front yard or like I said, UWL. The Czech boys are the ultimate triple threat. Bradley, a senior, is one of the premier talents in the state at the quarterback position. Owen, a junior, is up front blocking for his brother, creating those lanes. And Tommy, who was the water boy for the team last year when he was in eighth grade, is one of Bradley's favorite targets when he airs it out. We didn't get to see each other much with them being at practice for so long and whatever, so being able to hang out with them, go to school in the mornings with them, and then leave school and practice with them has uh, helped me and I think helped our bond as, a, as brothers. The trio has the special honor of leading out the team before the game. Us three will kind of be out front there and uh, lead our way to the 50-yard line. I cherish every moment of those, yeah. Bradley is having a monster final year statistically as a Ranger, but he says one of his favorite parts of the season is that he gets to create more memories with the two that he spent more time with than anyone. I definitely didn't think about this during last year's season where it's like, oh, I'll have a chance to play with both my siblings. Hey, good block, Owen. Good okay. stuff, Tommy. But now that it's happening, it's like, it's really, it's really special. As most brothers will tell you, though, there are moments where Owen and Tommy need to see what Big Bro was thinking during a specific play. Yeah, a lot of conversations at home about like me yelling at him to throw me the ball and whatever, going back on film, looking at to see if he made the right play or not. If I'm run blocking and he's like dancing in the backfield and you know, maybe he could have cut up field here, I was, I'd look back and like, what are you doing here? Why didn't you, why didn't you take this out of his hole? In a world of rivalries and competition, Bradley, Owen, and Tommy Check are a reminder that sometimes the strongest team is made up of family. I love that they've really brought me along with them. You know, getting our names announced, uh, maybe after a tackle or a reception, then we're like, yeah, that's my brother. It's just a really cool experience to be, you know, on the same football field, starting, in, in our case, um, you know, with us with us three as a trio. Good, Good job, buddy. Big brother, Brad. Good job, buddy. Yeah, fun story to do right there. And the Rangers looking to keep their great season going this Friday at Baraboo. That'll do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight.
Chart your career with a fabricator position at Chart Industries. Starting wage up to $30 per hour with no experience necessary. Excellent pay and awesome benefits. Apply now at jobs.chartindustries.com. It can be back-breaking work all day, every day, pretty much on your feet. So it burns me up when Eric Hovey says people in Wisconsin don't work hard. The guy is a multi-millionaire California banker. He has absolutely no idea what we're going through. He's living the high life out there in a big fancy house. He even brags about being in the 1%. Listen, don't come here and tell us we're not working hard when we are just getting by. Eric Hovey doesn't respect us at all. The guy's a straight up jerk. DSTC is responsible for the content of this ad. Are you thinking about new windows and doors? A new bathroom, a new kitchen, maybe a sunroom, siding, or a deck? Get started today with special savings while we celebrate serving homeowners for over 35 years. While we celebrate Danielle becoming the new general manager. And celebrate Dad's 80th birthday. Best products. The best people. Best prices. 35th anniversary at the board store. Birthday, happy birthday to you. He told us who he was. Should abortion be punished? There has to be some form of punishment. Then he showed us. For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. Now Donald Trump wants to go further with plans to restrict birth control, ban abortion nationwide, even monitor women's pregnancies. We know who Donald Trump is. He'll take control. We'll pay the price. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. What are you doing? Oh, we did our home insurance ourselves, but don't feel protected. So you're building your own American Family Insurance roof line? Yeah, you know, life's better when you're protected under American Family's roof. That's not how it works. Dad, we'll go. It's gonna hit. See, that's how it works. For real protection, save up to 23% by bundling your home and auto with us. This is a hallway. Doesn't evoke much feeling. But to those facing cancer or a complex condition, it feels like relief. Because all the doctors, treatments, and technology you've been fighting to find, they're all right here, under one roof, connected by hallways instead of highways. East Park Medical Center, coming soon. UW Health, remarkable. While families struggle to pay bills, Harris and the Democrats are wasting our tax dollars on their extreme liberal agenda. Giving government checks to illegal immigrants. Funding a Madison clinic where minors get transgender therapy without parents' consent. Pushing high schools to allow boys to compete in girls' sports. Senator Baldwin fights for this madness. Tammy Baldwin, radical, extreme, and wrong. I'm Eric Hovde, and I approve this message chart your career with a fabricator position at Chart Industries. Starting wage up to $30 per hour with no experience necessary. Excellent pay and awesome benefits. Apply now at jobs.chartindustries.com. You expect more. So thank you for watching News 8 Now. Welcome back. In your morning medical news, a Minnesota woman is raising awareness for stillbirth prevention after having experienced it herself. Caroline Cummings has her inspiring story and looks at what you should know. There is always going to be four, four kiddos in our family. For Amanda Duffy, family is at the center of her world. She has a sixth grader, third grader, and second grader, and one little love lost, but whose legacy lives on. It was earth shattering. I always say that my life as I knew it ended at that point and then a new life started and one that I did not sign up for. 16 hours before her scheduled delivery at 39 weeks, Reese Duffy was still born. Amanda says she was blindsided. My mind would play tricks on me because I would look at her and she looked like a swaddled newborn baby that was just sleeping. And she's not alone in that grief. One in 160 pregnancies end in stillbirth. Amanda admits she knew little about it, including that it may have been preventable. I knew moving forward that I would take my anger and sorrow um, and funnel that into Reese's legacy to try and make change for other people. This summer, she saw her advocacy turn into action. President Biden signed a bipartisan law unlocking federal health care funding for stillbirth prevention nationwide. When I went to the U.S. Capitol to start talking to lawmakers, there wasn't one person 
that I came in contact with that said, this is not important. They all said, this is absolutely important and this is something that needs to change. Wholeheartedly agree that we should be talking about this more. OBGYN Dr. Elizabeth Allaby says some women are more at risk, so getting prenatal care is essential. But at home, tracking fetal movement is also important. Your baby has a pattern. And so if you're not feeling that, if that pattern isn't happening or like a red flag is going off, yeah, those are things that you need to talk to your provider about. For Amanda, the Stillborn Prevention Act is a victory, but her fight for families isn't over. These babies are important and they're loved and they're very much wanted. Um, and so I just want that conversation to continue. Wisconsin officials are warning consumers about undeclared wheat in Maloney's bologna products from Durand. That alert is for their wild bratwurst and wild rice and cranberry bratwurst. Those products contain wheat. That's an allergen, but it's not listed on the label. The brats were sold at the Maloney's Bologna store on or before September 17th. So far, no one's gotten sick. If you have these and you're worried about the wheat, officials say throw them away. The federal government is making more at home COVID-19 tests available for free. Every household will be able to order a new round of four free test kits that will be available later this month. To order yours, visit the Postal Service's free website, covidtest.gov. Billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates and award-winning musician John Batiste are teaming up to fight hunger and malnutrition. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's annual Goalkeepers Report notes more than 400 million children worldwide are not getting the nutrients they need to grow and thrive. The report highlights concrete actions to save lives, including increasing milk production by two to three times, adding nutrients to household staples, and expanding access to prenatal vitamins. So. We've traditionally given pregnant women uh, two vitamins, folic acid and iron, and those are beneficial. But what we found through our studies was adding uh, 13 more in, which surprisingly only costs <clears throat> a little more than a dollar, that really improves the outcomes. And, uh, you know, so now we're trying to make sure every pregnant woman in Africa, where diets don't give them enough of these vitamins, uh, that they have access. The report looks at the impact of climate change on child malnutrition, forecasting an additional 40 million children will have stunted growth by 2050. La Crosse is hosting the Wisconsin Counties Association Conference this week. A thousand county officials attending that event at the La Crosse Center. Governor Tony Evers addressed the assembly, focusing on issues facing counties statewide. The conference features workshops and networking opportunities for county leaders. It's, it's just an outstanding opportunity to get together to meet those other people who deal with the same issues you do on a daily basis, hopefully make life for their citizens a little better when they go home. Senator Tammy Baldwin and Senate candidate Eric Hovde will give statements today. Time now is 638. Here's News 8 meteorologist Art Jarrett to tell us what to expect on our morning commute. All right, Alexandra, we have the rainfall that's still kind of working its way closer to Austin and Mason City. Right now, you're looking all the way over to areas right by Beaver Dam going towards Chicago, picking up uh, some uh, showers, to storm activity there. That being said, as the day progresses, we'll see this continue to weaken. Uh, in fact, it's going to weaken within a couple of hours from now. You're looking at that cloud shield uh, associated with that kind of working in the area right now. This just passed us and brought a nice little uh, round of uh, fog through our area for La Crosse. That being said, you're going to be seeing this, uh, this nice little troughing pattern with a short wave associated with this. This is going to come in and just dive down on us and then work its way down uh, along the Mississippi River going southward, then underskirt most of uh, Wisconsin as we go through the, uh, the morning hours and kind of skirt over towards Chicago. Eau Claire looking at sunny skies as we go through the 8 o'clock hour. We'll do the same for all the way to the 10 o'clock hour and into the 12 o'clock hour. You're looking at 65 degrees and pretty comfortable as well out there. Uh, you'll hold on to uh, some sunshine for La Crosse. Plenty of sunshine going into the 10 o'clock hour. Then we see mostly sunny skies with noon hour looking at at least 67 degrees with a few high clouds. We'll take it through La Crosse for the uh, next uh, uh, eight hours here. Continuing on, you're looking at some pretty good conditions as well as Eau Claire. Uh, 40s, the 50s, and the 70s on the way for you today. Highs for today, we're looking at at least 69 to about 73, maybe even 74 as you get to possible, who's in the fog right now. You'll hold on to the wind speeds right now that we're looking at. They are calm, so that means fog is going to linger till at least the 10 o'clock hour. All right, coming up in our buzz report, the Tony Awards for the 2024-2025 uh, Broadway season will return to New York City's Radio City Music Hall. More on the return to the venue and more on the Tony Awards when we return. Stay with us. 
It can be back-breaking work all day, every day, pretty much on your feet. So it burns me up when Eric Hubby says people in Wisconsin don't work hard. The guy is a multi-millionaire California banker. He has absolutely no idea what we're going through. He's living the high life out there in a big fancy house. He even brags about being in the 1%. Listen, don't come here and tell us we're not working hard when we are just getting by. Eric Hubby doesn't respect us at all. The guy's a straight up jerk. ESCC is responsible for the content of this ad. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience. And the world's first six function multi pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Get 0% APR on 2024 Sierra 1500 Denali models. That's over 6400 in average finance savings. Visit your best choice GMC dealer today. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. These places employ us, sponsor the Little League team, and feed and clothe us. That's why I'm proud of the work I've done to support our business community. I know that the side of the aisle you're on matters less than being on the side of our main streets. No party has a monopoly on good ideas. I'm Steve Doyle, and I'm working for our businesses, working for our communities, and I'm working for you. Quartz takes a different approach to health insurance. We know every life well lived is a journey, and we're here to light the way at every step. That's why for 40 years, we've been alongside the doctors and hospitals who know what their communities need. Because they're a part of them. Because we're a part of them. There's a fire burning in all of us. Let's ignite it together. Quartz, find your spark. Dutch Boy, it's only paint. It's only paint that comes in an award-winning twist and pour container. It's only paint that can cover the brightest shade of orange known to mankind in just one coat. It's only paint that will inspire you to write your masterpiece. It's only paint that will help you become TV's hottest writer, where one day you'll meet this guy who started that thing. So yeah, it's only paint. Only easy opening, smooth pouring, change your life both professionally and romantically. Dutch Boy Paint. A suspected Venezuelan gang member who was arrested for domestic battery. Violently attacked a woman physically and sexually. The border crisis is real here in Wisconsin. It's criminal gangs harming our community. We're stretched thin. Open borders and weak politicians are crushing us. Rebecca Cook is one of them. She doesn't back law enforcement. She'll never secure the border. She doesn't even want to. That's why we stand with Derek Van Orden. He has our back. And I've got yours. I'm Derek Van Orden, and I approve this message. All right, well, happy Fog Tuesday morning. Take a look at that, huh? Yeah, City Cam 8 holding on to some fog out there. That continues to linger. We had a nice batch just about, say, 15 minutes ago that's kind of tracked on away now. Let's take a gander what's happening here. It's fog lo local activity right now. Still holding on to uh, patchy to near-dense fog for uh, Boscobel as well as Prairie du Chien. That continues up to Voke, uh, Sparta and Vogue Field where you're looking at dense fog there. And that's why we're seeing this overcast right now holding on to fog getting closer to the surface for La Crosse. You get into Winona, we are pretty much much encapsulated with fog as we go right into uh, this morning hour, as you can see, because of that from Winona. Well, up to the north, though, Claire and Ladysmith, the fog is backed off just a tad. You'll still see some of it coming up from the south for you, so Eau Claire will continue to clear out as we go in the 10 o'clock hour, as well as La Crosse, and extending down to areas by Boscobel and Prairie du Chien. You'll clear out as well in areas to the east, but we still have fog going over by Toma. That being said, take a look at the winds. The winds are fairly light. They'll get up to about maybe 8 miles per hour, 9 miles per hour, in some cases gusting. And that being said, that's not an issue today, but we do have a uh, cloud cover still coming in crossing the Mississippi and within the next 15 minutes or so. And we'll look at this uh, picking up some rainfall associated with that. It had a little shower to maybe some heavy rainfall associated with, but it's now that's now quelled. We'll hold on to more clouds getting closer to us as we get into the uh, 11 a.m. hour going finishing out the late morning. Clouds will continue to increase. That will take us to partly to near mostly cloudy skies before it uh, gets out of the way and we lose that cloud cover. Hey, take a look up to the north. We are cool. You can see that big dip coming out at area of low 
pressure right over Canada and spilling right on top of us. That'll continue to kind of shift a little bit as we go to finish out the day for Tuesday here. Then we get into Wednesday. A ridge of high pressure comes in, bumps up. This area of low pressure will continue to drag right across the Midwest, all the way down into Kentucky as well, and extending down into portions of Tennessee, possibly as we go in the next couple of days. Mild conditions will ensue for us going into Wednesday. And as we go, high pressure continues to build. That's putting temperatures up in the upper 70s for us. That will continue all the way into your weekend. That being said, take a look at nine right here. Nine continues to track heading into the Gulf of Mexico. You'll see this continue on, maybe getting close to eclipsing uh, 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 portions of Cuba. If it does, it will move a little bit closer over to Tampa St. Pete. But for now, it is heading right for portions of the Florida Panhandle, and that is going right into all of that wildlife area. So there's really not much uh, out there for as far as human uh, 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 living space uh, goes into. Then you see it heading for Atlanta as a tropical storm, so heavy rainfall headed their way. Then it's off to near uh, portions of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then heading right for uh, Kentucky, uh, through Kentucky and then right into Cincinnati as an area of low pressure, and that's done, moving up more cloud cover and potential rainfall for our area down to the southern stretch of our forecast. In fact, you'll see it down here holding on down to the south. That rainfall will be there for Saturday going into Sunday. As we carry over to the next couple of days here, we're going to see temperatures in the, uh, so well, we'll get into the 70s, the upper 70s as we finish out the next couple of days. You can see once we get into Wednesday and into the weekend, and then we'll start to taper it down going into next week. Back to you. In our Morning Buzz report, the Tony Awards for the 2024-25 Broadway season will return to New York City's Radio City Music Hall in June. After being held at other venues for several years, the show is set for June 8th on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Radio City Music Hall was the traditional venue for the Tony Awards up till recently. The ceremony was at the smaller Lincoln Center's David H. Cox Center last year. Industry members were unhappy about the lack of seating and having less space. Jerry Seinfeld and Jim Gaffigan are hitting the road together for a tour through North America. Next year's tour will stop at eight arenas in the U.S. and Canada. It's not the first time the two comedians are teaming up. They went on a four stadium tour last year. The two also worked together in the Netflix comedy Unfrosted. Tickets for the new tour expected to go on sale Friday. Grab a car. We're gearing up. How did I adjusted it to reality? And does that no, it doesn't work on everything. No, you can't try it. No, you can't drive. No more questions. Now get in. Chris Evans and Dwayne Johnson team up to rescue a kidnapped Santa Claus in the latest trailer for Red One. Lucy Liu and J.K. Simmons also star in the holiday action flick, arriving in theaters November 15th. I click leave on porch. Your subordinates will be reported to DoorDash HQ. Alexi, it's me. Open up. Milena? Marvel fans are getting a new action-packed film. The first trailer for Thunderbolts released. It includes a cast starring Captain America's Sebastian Stan and Black Widow cast members Florence Pugh and David Harbour. The Marvel villains team up for secret operations on behalf of the U.S. government. I learned um, some intel, some secret What's secret that? information about that movie from our director Ryan. Oh, really? It had an asterisk on the name, ah. but you're not supposed to, you don't have to say it. It just means he said that during the closing credits they might change the name of the movie. What? Isn't that interesting? Wow, that's yeah. a first. Yeah. From our Mar Marvel Ry uh, insider Ryan. Well, mm -hmm. thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Before we had to break, it's time to look at today's look who's eight. Hi, I'm Nara, turning eight years old today. She loves to spend time with her friends, family, especially her brother. Yeah, happy birthday to her. And Lyle is turning 88. He loves cracking jokes, his garden, and spending time with his friends and family. All right on. All right. If you know a special someone turning eight weeks, eight months, eight years, 18, 80, or 88 years old soon, we'd love to feature them. Just upload their photo to our website, news8000.com, and look for the Submit Pictures button underneath the home tab. Time now is 648. Stay with us. We have everything you need to know in five minutes or less. Your morning news now is coming up next. I'm Nate Burleson in Wisconsin, a possible make or break state in this election. I'm hitting the road and talking to voters across the political spectrum. That's coming up on CBS Mornings after News 8 Now this morning. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. Fentanyl is killing over a 1,000 people a year in Wisconsin. New reporting shows that Eric Hubdi is doing business with a bank accused of links to the Mexican drug cartel. 
Banco Azteca loaded up $26 million in cash and flew it to Eric Hovde's bank in California. Other U.S. banks have cut ties with this Mexican bank, but Eric Hovde took their money. That's 26 million more reasons you can't trust Eric Hovde. Sometimes the celebration means fireworks and loud music. I'll just tell you that I'm celebrating 35 years at the board store, 80 years on the planet, and my daughter Danielle becoming the new general manager of the board store. Let what's personal to me be personal to you with savings on your next home improvement. Call for a prompt free estimate on windows and doors, on siding or gutters, on a bathroom or a kitchen, on a sunroom or deck. Better products. Better people. Better prices. The Board Store, improving your home, improving your life. Tammy Baldwin on transparency. I don't think there should be two sets of rules, one for the wealthy and one for the rest of us. 12 years later, Baldwin pushed for conflict of interest regulations, but exempted herself. And Baldwin won't disclose any shared assets she has with her partner, despite the potential for conflict of interest. Tell Tammy Baldwin, we deserve the truth. Wisconsin Principles is responsible for the content of this advertising. We all need a fan, we all need a crew. When you're in a jam, don't know what to do. Just reach out your hand and we'll see you through. Doesn't matter where you're at, we got your back. We got your back. With a Medica health plan, you're not just covered, you're cared for. It's Ford SUV season in the Northland. Time for great offers across the entire lineup, including Ford Explorer, America's all-time best-selling SUV. Get ready for the coming season with weather-ready features that make life easier, like heated seating, a heated steering wheel, and remote start. Amazing offers on your favorite Ford SUVs. This is Ford SUV season. Now, lease a new 2024 Ford Bronco Sport for just $319 a month for 36 months. Only at your local Northland Ford dealers. While families struggle to pay bills, Harris and the Democrats are wasting our tax dollars on their extreme liberal agenda. Giving government checks to illegal immigrants. Funding a Madison clinic where minors get transgender therapy without parents' consent. Pushing high schools to allow boys to compete in girls' sports. Senator Baldwin fights for this madness. Tammy Baldwin, radical, extreme, and wrong. I'm Eric Hovde, and I approve this message. First Warren Weather on News 8 Now. Welcome back at 652. Time for your morning news now. The final suspect accused in a 2022 Eau Claire murder has taken a plea deal. 29-year-old Hamon Sullivan of Altoona pleaded no contest to an amended count of second degree recklessly endangering safety. Prosecutors dropped two more serious charges against him. Sullivan and three others were allegedly involved in the death of 39-year-old Christopher Connor. Sullivan's sentencing is in December. The UW Board of Regents will vote Friday whether to fire former UWL Chancellor Joe Gao. They fired him as chancellor last year after he appeared in online pornography. Now the full UW Board will meet in Kenosha Friday to potentially remove him from his tenured faculty position. The news comes after a UW committee recommended firing him during a hearing in Madison last week. The 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly starts today. The agenda includes meetings on rising sea levels and combating the threat of antimicrobial resistance to global health. President Biden will speak today. <laughs> the UN General Assembly also comes as tensions in the Middle East are boiling over as Israel steps up its military campaign against Hezbollah. Officials in Lebanon say Israeli strikes killed close to 500 people Monday. The terror group has been firing rockets into Israel since the day after Hamas's deadly October 7th attack on southern Israel, forcing tens of thousands to leave their homes. Wisconsin Democrats are criticizing Republican Senate candidate Eric Hovde over his bank's alleged ties to a troubled Mexican bank. Milwaukee Journal Sentinel reporting Banco Azteca has long ties to the Mexican drug cartel. They allegedly flew $26 million in cash over the border to Hovde's SunWest Bank last year. This raises questions about why Eric Hovde still isn't being fully honest about which other foreign banks and governments are depositing money into Eric Hovde's bank. 
What else does Eric Hovde hiding? Hovde's campaign releasing a statement calling the allegations made up and a desperate ploy to distract voters. Former President Donald Trump is set to visit Crawford County this weekend. He will give remarks at the Prairie du Chien Area Art Center at 11.30 Saturday. Doors for that will open at 8.30 a.m. His campaign says he'll speak about the border and recent crimes he says were committed by immigrants in the area. Governor Tony Evers was in La Crosse, highlighting clean energy and sustainability. The governor's visit coincided with National Clean Energy Week. He toured Summit Environmental School, visiting classrooms, their outdoor natural playscape, and he even went canoeing with students. I think students leave here with an idea that saving our environment and being conscious of how important our environment is is, is absolutely going to be part of their lives here forever. Summit is among the next schools aiming to go solar, part of the Solar on Lacrosse Schools initiative. Looks like a major hurricane headed for Florida on the Florida Panhandle, possibly as we get into Thursday around the evening hours, around 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Well, that means that, uh, fortunately, it's not going to be hitting a lot of public areas, but for now, that's going to continue to bring in some potential humidity for us as we get closer to the weekend. We're going to see some dense fog this morning and then possibly getting into warmer conditions as we go into tomorrow and continuing that right through the weekend and beyond. Thank you, Art. For many people, putting together a jigsaw puzzle is a fun way to pass the time these professionals, every second counts, they are looking to be crowned the best puzzler. Last week, 3,500 individual expert jigsaw puzzle solvers from around the world were in Spain for the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. Norway's Kristen Thuv won the individual title, completing a 500-piece puzzle in just 37 minutes. What? The event, growing in popularity since 2019, features participants ranging in age from 9 to 67. Organizers say it celebrates non-digital entertainment in our screen-dominated world. Hmm. That's pretty quick That's for a big puzzle. Wow. Impressive. That would take me months, I think. Right, I, I right. would give up, you know? Yeah, I'd probably just quit and then just go hang out in Spain. Exactly. <laughs> Why not? Thank you for starting your morning with us. We will see you back here at noon. Until then, enjoy your day.